This is what we call a production possibility curve. Let's look at each of the two axes. The vertical axis is an economics grade. Let's imagine you're taking two classes, economics and history, and if you devoted all of your study, available study time to economics, you could get a grade of 10, something quite high. If, on the other hand, you devoted all of your time to studying history, you could get a grade of 10 in history, and that's what this point B down here means. So the two extremes are spending all of your time on history, or up here at point A, spending all of your time on economics, and in each case, getting the maximum grade. There's this curve that you see highlighted here, and that curve represents all of the combinations of hours you could spend on either economics or history, various combinations of the, of the two. What's important about this curve is that each of those combinations of time spent on the two uh, courses gives you the best possible outcomes of those two courses. We call it a production possibility curve. Uh, it goes back to being able to produce something. In this case, the output that you're producing are grades on either e economics or history. And any point along that curve means you're making best use of your time. However, as you can see, let's just take a look, for instance, at point C. Point C is on that curve, so it's one of the best combinations. And if you see its position, it means that you have a quite a high score in economics. Now, this is something over a 9 here. But a pretty mediocre score in history, something on the order of a 4. So point C is much more oriented towards um, doing well in economics, less so in history. Point E down here is kind of the reverse. Quite a high score in history, not very good in economics. And point D is in the middle someplace. Kind of roughly, it's not quite the same as I look at it, uh, maybe a score of 8 in economics and 7 or so in history. Still somewhere in between. Now in this graph, the other thing we want to look at are the two remaining points. Point F here means that somehow you're not making the most use out of your um, time, the most efficient use out of your time. So it's a combination of grades, history and economics that is below the line and thus not optimal. It's not making good efficient use of your time. So it's possible to be at point F but not desirable. On the other hand, point G up here is a point that has high grades in both economics and history but because it lies beyond the curve it's a place you can't attain it. Your scarce resources, in this case your study time, are limited. There's only so many hours you have available to you. There's no way you can get out to G unless you somehow increase those scarce resources. Now that we've looked at our production possibility curve, let's see if there's anything that we can learn about the choices among the various points here on the curve. As you as we talked about just a minute ago, we had three common or sample points, C, D, and E. Each of them represent different allocations of time between studying economics and studying history. Now, which do you suppose might be the best? For most of us, we'd probably go to D. It seems like it's in the middle. It uh, seems to be a reasonably nice balance between economics and history. But I'd like to suggest that the production possibility curve and the information that we've got here really don't tell us which is the best point for any individual person. A lot of that depends on their own um, preferences and what's most important to them. For instance, if we were an economics major, we might prefer point C. Point C uh, delivers a, quite a good grade in economics and sacrifices a bit of a grade in history, but if we were an econ major, maybe that would be you know, a, a good solution for us. On the other hand, a uh, history major or somebody else might prefer to, to spend more time in history, and for them, point E is a better uh, choice between the two. The bottom line here is that the production possibility curve helps us understand choices we have and options, but it doesn't actually give us at least with the information we have here, it doesn't give us a, uh, a defined, specific answer. It just helps set up the question.
The last thing we're going to look at with our production possibility curve is the choices we have when we move from one point on the curve to another. Let's say right now that we're on point D, reasonably even balance between our economics grade and our history grade. But on further reflection, we decide, gee, we'd really like to boost our economics grade, understanding that we may suffer a little bit in history. The way I can draw that is like this. So here's this line will show roughly the increase in our economics grade as a result of uh, going from D to C. Let's get the arrow on the right end. So there, that upward arrow shows how much our economics grade has increased. But as we can imagine, there's also a loss in our history grade. It was here at D and now it's going to move further to the left. Let's just draw a line for that as well. Okay, so that line, the one going uh, roughly horizontal line, shows us how much our history grade drops when we decide to go from a combination that represented by point D to a combination represented by point C. What we call this line that has the, um, that's the drop in the history, in our history score is our opportunity cost. How about two P's in opportunity? That loss in our history grade is represented there by this distance from D to the left that shows how much our history grade dropped. Opportunity cost is a fundamental principle in economics and I encourage you to spend some time looking at the information both in the text and uh, on the blog to understand this fully. Opportunity cost is a benefit foregone. It's something you give up by making a decision. In this case, the decision was to go from point D to point C. By making that decision, from, by going from D to C, we decided we we're going to, there's a benefit to it, increasing our economics grade, but there's something we give up. And in this case, what we're giving up is, uh, is our history score, which has now declined to some extent. Think about opportunity costs in a number of different ways. We'll have some examples that you can find in the text and on the blog. Make sure you feel really comfortable with this particular principle.